Hello, today we're going over a RF guidelines video, a guide to keep in mind when you come to designing some boards. What is going to be covered in this short little lecture of mine, transmission lines, component placement, ground pours, is what's going to be covered, and let's get into it. Transmission lines we're starting off with, use short and direct transmission lines. This, this is just a standard thing, try and keep your traces as short as possible, okay? Do not try to route something from one end of the board to another. It's inefficient it's not ideal and really it should be the aim of the game to keep your signals as short as possible this of course goes through all signals and whatnot but if you really can't do anything then it's unavoidable but always keep that in mind avoid the use of vias if possible so vias if at the introduction of a via you will have induced capacitance and inductance and of course transferring an rf signal through that might have some issues and again it's not ideal try to keep everything on the same layer so if you're using the top layer keep that all on the top layer avoid large bands like chamfers chamfers instead use a curve so i've got an example image here to explain just this and if i get my pointer you can see this is a chamfer chamfer i don't know how to pronounce that you come that same down there and this curve is probably better no indeed it is better so do this instead avoid this and having a straight line is ideal so if it was going directly perfect this is better this is eh, it's okay i'll do the trick and never do a right angle if using differential pairs keep them the same length so this goes for all differential pairs regardless what you're routing this is a quick example of one so you could see they've put it's came out of here and it's coming as close as possible and to maintain that i believe with some differential pairs i think for usb there is a is it 75 to 90 ohm uh, there's a controlled impedance you have to keep in mind so it matters about the width uh, the distance between the two the two tracks work with your pcb manufacturer to let them know of any specifics or requirements which are crucial crucial sorry never assume this is a mistake i've probably made one too many times just assuming things and be like ah it'll be all right ah it's okay don't worry about it and of course it's never never a good thing it's a terrible habit i tell you if you have something that you're concerned about, you think it's going to be an issue, you think it's something they need to take particular care to when, when making your beautiful board, let them know. Please drop them an email, Let get on a phone call with them, tell them, hey, I've got this part, please take particular care with it. We do want to not want to mess up it or the distances, they matter, so on and so forth. Never assume. Bad habit. Control impedance, something we spoke about, well, we speak about a lot. Uh, when we come to routing the 50 ohms and whatever i believe i've made some videos on them uh, or there'll be somewhere i'll try and put them put them up to discuss a bit about and this is the thing which uh, your layer stack up matters and your, tr your trace width essentially for what your board wants but particularly for rf we're working 50 ohms component placement a certain frequency is a capacitor will act like an inductor and an inductor will act like a capacitor interesting isn't it very very interesting these are some graphs to help you understand if you've never seen them before but this is what an ideal capacitor would look like in our ideal world and unfortunately we do not live in one so this is how a real one would react so as you can see as the frequency goes up our impedance drops and we reach a certain point here where it shoots back up again this is the resonance frequency so if you're working within certain frequencies keep in mind when you do choose these components that they do not suddenly turn into something else the same goes for an inductor, it's the complete opposite, you see uh, the graph is just reversed. At uh, a resonant frequency it will turn into a capacitor. Optimum antenna placement on the edge of your board or in the corners, I think the English is wrong in that sentence, so I'll have a look at that. But you're not here for that, so let's check out this antenna placement over here. You can, If you look on a lot of dev boards and stuff, if you look at a lot of board placements, you see the antennas smacked into the corner. Or on the edge of your board for good reason too because it can radiate it, you can see it's over here has all this space over here this is quite optimum and you can see these lines over here this was actually the keep out area so had I placed this antenna in the middle I would have this keep out area for it to do its thing but because it's in free space it does not matter and we are all good so this would be ideal and if maybe you see with some ESP32s you see when they have the little PCB antenna it's even in under you know they've cut out the board that's been soldered to so the bare PCB it's a module and whatnot you can see that they've made a cutout there for the antenna for the PCB antenna here we are talking about ground port now use a ground port on your top and bottom layer of your boards it's good 
So I didn't really speak much about the ground good. pour here on why you should ground the top and bottom layers, just because there are loads of people who do it much better than what I am able to do it. So, and I highly recommend this video by Rick Hartley, which will forever change your perception in how you actually construct your boards. I've seen this video probably good to five times and I'm still rewatching it to this day because it's a long video and there's so much to take in and it's really good, valuable information. Highly recommend it. New stitching bias. So we're going to jump into another board over here. Here we have the gas sensor board and you can see I, there is a distinctive lack of stitching bias. For this reason I totally did not know how to do it in KiCad and I forgot and apparently there's a plugin for it so more learning for me I guess but what the stitching via does it's as the name suggests it stitches everything together ties them all to one ground and this makes it so you do not have a massive antenna essentially there's also loads of other benefits but for this purpose if you had empty spaces like this, it could act like an antenna. So you can see here, I've placed the vias in here in these in these islands to or antennas essentially, and this is just to reduce that effect because these will cause you problems. Maybe not that like these simple simple boards and whatnot, but as you further develop and you want to experiment and whatever, it's just good practice. Get rid of any islands. So here we are back again at the gas sensor board, and this is what I meant by remove any islands. So these things might be like, oh, maybe this is probably a good example here. In Altium, there is a tool to remove this, but I'm not sure for other packages, or you could remove them yourself if if you are able to make a cutout. But these things will also act like antennas, and it's really not ideal. So even I, mean, I just seen this thing here. Maybe I could place the the ground via in this small little area here, or just not include it, or make some more space for it. So you see, even even this part over here, this would be an, an island had the, the ground via not been there, and these are less than ideal. Read the data sheet for your antenna layout guide. It usually requires ground to be removed as well as other layers. So in your antenna data sheet, there should be a guide on whether the dimensions of certain things needs to be required and I'll chuck an image up on screen now and you can see on this particular data sheet it requires certain things to be to be cut out and have specific dimensions to them as well for the whole thing the ground underneath and all other layers to be completely removed you need to follow this do not just anyhow chuck them as how you want and then think you'll be okay please do read this this is very very important and it's not a new and it's kind of an odd thing when you when you think that uh, is new. I remember when I first placed it, I thought, oh, you actually need to do that. Is that actually a thing? Do I actually need to do that? I thought it's just a component. So the more you know, not just the ground layer, every other layer on your board needs to be cut out. No metal should be underneath. This attenuates signals. So even around it, I believe it will, you just wouldn't radiate whatsoever. You just wouldn't be able to get a signal out of it. Do a cut out of all layers. So back to the previous point I've just mentioned that if you had a antenna, of course, should have made that more clear had antenna do a cut out of all layers if the data sheet requires it and this is the example here of what i spoke about so you can see there's a huge black area this is basically no just purely cut out there is no copper whatsoever and we'll see even the components of the laser be as per the data sheet so this has been totally cut out and the only bad thing about this one would be this battery over here this is actually a battery on the bottom of the bottom of the board so it might face some some issues there and of course had i thought about this this would have been moved chucked out and never want to do that again but of course this was a fairly smallish board it was a kind of through hole component with the battery holder so it had to be done unfortunately a side note before we end off route things that are important first when back to the short and direct transmission lines route the rf first the crystals whatever you deem is important because the last thing you want to do is route everything else and have your thing going for loops and loops and loops of vias and things and you couldn't route it at all so please do route those types of signals first it saves you a lot of firefighting in the future it is horrible to do take it from me absolutely horrible learn from my mistakes and that's all i wanted to go through today's short and easy guide hope you've learned something from it